Along with the telecasts, the Apollo 10 crew also shot a series of videos with their 16mm data acquisition camera. Out of all of them, there is one shot that is quite questionable. We see Gene Cernan and the window behind him. There is no question that there is a little white dot outside that window. What could it be? However, this is where the tape ends. For all we know, that little white dot could very well be the moon 240,000 miles away. But here's the interesting part. In this piece of 16mm footage, we can clearly see the hatch window completely filled with a blue light. Because both Stafford and Cernan are seen wearing beards in this video, it tends to suggest it was filmed around the 72 hour mark, when our heroes had absolutely no view of the sun or the moon. Uh, right now we cannot see the moon even though it is rapidly accelerating towards us. We can't see the sun right now, Charlie. Roger, we're not in the right attitude to see it. So, if the blue light we see coming through the hatch window in these two videos could not be from the sun or the moon, where else could it be from? And our view of the Earth before terminating the 7220 telecast? We see it, but not before the lights go out. Okay, Charlie, we'll terminate this path with one quick look outside and see how the 210 foot dish looks at the Earth from outside, okay? Uh, Roger, 10, we're standing by, over. Also seen in the 16mm reels is one brief clip of Cernan standing in front of the hatch window with a little white dot outside it. Of course, this little clip lasts only a few seconds anyway, and that little white dot could very well be the moon viewed from Earth orbit. That's all for the Apollo 10 TV transmissions filmed on the way to the moon. But on the way back, four more were shot. The first one at 147 hours and 23 minutes. The second one, 152 hours, 29 minutes and 19 seconds. The third, at 173 hours, 27 minutes and 17 seconds. And the last one, at 186 hours, 51 minutes and 49 seconds. In the 147.23 telecast, the view of Earth we see is clearly behind a pane of glass, as a congealed particle is seen lancing around in front of the Earth. The edge of the window is also visible. However, much like Apollo 11's little gem, all we see inside the capsule is darkened walls and no astronauts. Okay, 10, now we've got the moon now, it's coming in nicely. For the 152.29 telecast, we start off with a view of the moon before one of the Earth. Between them, of course, is darkness. Let me take you over, Bruce, to uh, show you uh, the Earth from Tom's window. Right in the middle of Stafford's monologue, however, the camera suddenly cuts. At this time, you should have the Earth coming through on your set down in Houston, over. Roger, we've got it. Okay, uh, Houston, Apollo 10, uh, we're looking...
looking at the Earth out our left window, we're now approximately 168,000 miles on our return journey to the Earth. And again, relative to the Earth, we're traveling approximately 3,500 miles an hour. As you can see the Earth there... Just before the camera cuts, Stafford reports, we're traveling approximately 3,500 miles per hour. After the cut, he says, as you can see the Earth there, actually, it's upside down with the white cap as the North Pole. We're traveling approximately 3,500 miles an hour. As you can see the Earth there, actually it's upside down with the white cap as the North Pole. And a look at the transcript reveals a whopping portion of Stafford's description of the Earth has been cut from the Spacecraft Films DVD set and the telecast presented as complete when it isn't. It seems yet again, when we go back inside the spacecraft, the camera blacks out. Okay, uh, Houston, uh, we're going to take you inside the cockpit for just a couple of minutes here. Over. Roger. Okay, we've got the interior scene. Looks like you're looking at the uh, dosimeter or the radiometer there. The same thing happens in the 173-27 telecast, though we do see the Earth disappear behind the number one window. Okay, we'll take you outside now and show you how the Earth looks today. It's starting to get bigger as we approach 100,000 miles. Now, Roger, we'll stand by for your commentary. Charlie, we'll have it in a minute. It's just coming right over the window. It's here it comes now. Uh, Roger, we have it then. Out. With the, and John will take the uh, camera there and go right and take it out to our center hatch window. And here you can see the Earth as it starts to go out the left side window. Roger. Uh, 10, uh, Houston, uh, we got uh, just 30 seconds left on the high gain on this uh, pass. Looks well, like we won't catch you this time, Charlie, but that big uh, low-pressure uh, cloud uh, cell, very distinctive over the Alaskan area, Aleutian area, is uh, very distinctive to us with the naked eye. Uh, we, we can't quite get it for you out the uh, hatch window at this time as we're going. Uh, Roger. Uh, we'll uh, stand by then. Uh, uh, we got about 20 seconds left or so. And uh, if you want to show us, uh, it'll be uh, stand by in eight more minutes and we'll have the high gain back if you want to keep the camera up. Over. I can't help but sense a pattern emerging when the camera cuts during the final telecast of the Earth. Just before the cut, Stafford says that he can see Saudi Arabia, the Gulf of Oman, and the Indian Ocean at the same time. After this cut, Senan says, Tom's going to zoom the TV into the Gulf of Oman. But also we can see Saudi Arabia, the Gulf of Oman, and the Indian Ocean at this time. Tom's going to zoom the TV into the Gulf of Oman. Uh, let's see what you can see there. The transcript reveals that Stafford's, and I'll give you a little zoom here in on Saudi Arabia and India, was cut from the Spacecraft Films DVD. Our old friend the particle on the outer pane is back to it seems. And of course, there is a shot of darkness between the Apollo 10's final view of the Earth and the final interior view. And why don't we take you inside the cockpit for one quick minute.
Okay, we have it inside the cabin now, Tom, and uh, we got a uh, pretty good look at a clean-shaven command module pilot there. Having watched every last minute of flight footage included on the Spacecraft Films DVD, I can safely say that there is no bona fide view of the Earth from Apollo 10, as the shot always cuts away or blacks out from interior to exterior. There seem to be plenty of transparencies in this video set. On the other hand, there is also what can be considered gems. With this in mind, we must conclude that some of these views of Earth may have been filmed using a backlit transparency over the window, others were most likely filmed on Earth in a studio environment inside a CSM mock-up with a globe outside the window and then sandwiched between actual flight footage. But finding the answer to how the views of Earth were faked has only asked more questions. Why is it, in multiple circumstances, the audio is uncut but the video it's running alongside is clearly edited. Uh, and a color for the people over in that area, but uh, probably seeing it in black and white. If these scenes were broadcast as they were on the Spacecraft Films DVD, then what the world saw wasn't live at all. As any filmmaker knows for a fact, these kinds of edits take place during post-production, not whilst the film is being recorded. It would not have been possible to cut and paste the footage as they were broadcasting it to the world. One might argue that maybe the astronauts cut the camera and then started rolling moments later. However, if that were the case, the audio in the telecasts would also be cut. Oh, quite a ways to go before we uh, fill up our screen, screen uh, Tom. Uh, it's, uh... Instead, the dialogue runs synchronized to these videos with no signs of interruption when the video cuts. And the transcript confirms that the video matches the dialogue. The only plausible explanation for this is that these views of Earth were pre-filmed, edited together, and then broadcast with the ground-to-air communications dubbing the video, regardless of the edits. In spite of these obvious cuts in the Apollo 10 transmissions, and also the little gem from Apollo 11, the propagandists still insist that, quote, the video from the command module during the coast phase of the voyage was broadcast seamlessly with no breaks or cuts from one camera to another. But clearly, this is not the case. The continuous video claim is just another pad to their long, sad and sorry list of lies. Another lie that can be added to the list is Spacecraft Film's claim that their DVD set contains the complete, raw footage from Apollo 10. If this is true, why are portions documented in NASA's transcript clearly absent in the telecast they sold? What is Mark Gray hiding from? In my bona fide search for the truth, it has become clear that when there is something, anything, that the propagandists do not want you to know about, they absolutely will not show it to you, or even mention it to you, ever. Sadly, we may never know the significance of what Spacecraft Films was excluding. In addition to the Apollo 10 telecasts, when shown the transparency telecast, Dr. Edgar Mitchell claimed to have recorded a view of the Earth on Apollo 14.